My name is Hadria Stewart and I'm a member of the Kinson Technical High School family. I'll be your teacher of English for this afternoon. Today's lesson will be about extended writing. Let's get started. Now let us focus on our objectives for today. By the end of today's session, candidates should be able to properly write and format a formal letter. Candidates should also be able to plan for a formal letter by using the prompts provided by City and Gills. Candidates should also be able to track the development of the formal letter from the planning stage right through to completion. And candidates should have a better understanding of the rubric used for marking the extended writing task on a stage two reading and writing paper. So we hope to achieve all of these things today. Now let me once again remind you of the grading scheme. Right, to earn your distinction, you have to attain 85 to 100% pass, merit 65 to 84%, pass is 50 to 64%, and anything below 50 is a failure. Remember, you are to work for that distinction, okay? Now, by now, you would know the theme for the 2021 exam. Yes, it is climate change. We spoke about it yesterday, and we're going to talk about it a lot, okay? And I hope that by now, you have been doing your individual research and you're making notes. So you can start having a conversation about climate change. Now, if we look closely at the images on the screen, we will see one of the factors that contribute to climate change, and we will see some of the effects that climate change will have on the environment. And remember that when City and Guilds provides the source documents, images are always used, right? And these pictures, they say a lot, so make sure you spend some time to examine the images closely. And the images are usually labeled, image A, B, C, and so on. So make sure you pay attention to that. Now let's do a recap of some of what we spoke about yesterday regarding climate change. Now we did mention that weather is the changes that we see and feel outside from day to day. Climate is the usual weather of a place. The climate can vary for different seasons. Earth's climate is what you get when you combine all the climates around the world together. And climate change is a change in the usual weather found in a place. Very important points. Now, weather can change in just a few hours, as you and I know, but climate takes hundreds or even millions of years to change. Earth's temperature has gone up about one degree Fahrenheit in the last 100 years, but we know that this has significant negative impacts, right? Now, scientists think that Earth's temperature will keep going up for the next 100 years. Scientists think that we can do things. Yes, we human beings can do things to stop the climate from changing as much. So bear those in mind, and I'm sharing with you the source of my information again. So it came from an online source, right? It's written by Dan Stillman from the Institute of Global Environmental Strategies and Jocasta Green from NASA Educational Technology Services, and NASA stands for National Aeronautics and Space Administration, and it was last updated in 2017. So you can go ahead and do your own research. Now today we're going to continue to focus on this stage two specimen paper under the theme environmental change, and it is closely aligned to the 2021 theme, which is climate change. Now we're going to focus on the extended writing task. That is where we want to spend some time today. I know many persons don't love the extended writing task, but you have to do it in order to be successful in the exam. And as I've said before, start with a paragraph and then wait, work your way up to those six and seven paragraphs, eight paragraphs until you get to the 300 words for stage two. Now, it says here, section two, remember your reading and writing paper is divided in two sections. You have section one and you have section two. Section two now values 30 marks, okay? Now, you're to write a letter to the Minister for Climate Change and the Environment explaining your concerns about climate change and the effect on your community. The address to write to is Houses of Parliament, Garden House, 81 Duke Street, Kingston. So you are given the inside address. Okay, so all you have to do now is to just make up a name for the Minister for Climate Change and the Environment. Now here are the prompts. What are some things that you can possibly think about that you can include in your letter? So think about the effects of climate change on your community. Think about your concerns for your community. Think about the things that can be done and think about what you want the government to do, okay? 
Now, you may use information from source documents one and two, but the letter must be in your own words. Remember that City and Gills uses a thematic approach. So the climate change um, theme for this year, that is going to be featured in all the documents that you use. It's going to be featured in the speaking and listening activity as well. So you can get ideas and you can get information from the source documents, but please ensure that you put those ideas in your own words so that your voice is distinct from the author's voice, okay? Now, we suggest that you write about 200 to 300 words. And remember, this is going to come if you practice, practice, practice. Every day you practice to write something, it gets easier, right? So we have that agreement. Now, you will be tested on, the examiner is telling you exactly how you're going to be tested. So you will be tested on planning your writing. And remember, you do get marks for planning and you write better when you plan first. And you have already been given the prompts, so you know what to, the different areas to focus on as you plan. Your plan now is not a rough draft, okay? Don't, don't make, confuse it. Now, you will be tested on using format, the proper format and structure for a formal letter. So you have to know what a formal letter looks like on paper, which means that you have to practice writing them from now. You'll be tested on using suitable language and level of detail, and of course, you're going to use standard Jamaican English. Using clear, writing clearly, using appropriate sentence structure, so your simple sentences, your compound sentences, and your complex, right? But um, we don't focus so much on the complex um, sentences at this stage, more at stage three, but ensure that you have a variety of simple and compound sentences. Definitely going to focus on grammar, punctuation, and spelling. And you will also be tested on how you present your information in a logical order and using paragraphs appropriately. Very, very important. Now, let us talk a little about the formal letter, right? And I'm sure that you would have written one or two before. Now, your formal letter should have your contact information. So if I am reading your letter, I should know who the letter is coming from, right? It should have things like your name and your address, and you can include your telephone number as well and your email address. Now, the date the letter was prepared is also very, very important. The receiver's name or the recipient's name, the person's position or title, the name of the organization and the address, very, very important. We usually call that the inside address. That is followed by the salutation or the greeting. Then we can have a heading. Notice I said it is optional. So for some letters, the heading is essential, right, for some you can leave it out. And then we have the body of our letter, which is written in paragraphs, and we end with our complimentary close. I must know that you have ended the letter. So please do not end abruptly. Let me see your complimentary close. Now, there are some C's of letter writing, three of them actually, that I will share with you today, and I hope that you are making notes, right? Now, the three general principles on which all letters are based, the first one is clarity. And as you hear the word clarity, you think of clear, right? Yes. So the let, the ensure that the content, what you want to say, what you have to say, ensure that it is clearly stated, clearly expressed, and that there is no room for misinterpretation. So say exactly what you mean. Then the next C is conciseness. Maybe you know the word concise, right? If you do, you would know conciseness. And those who are familiar with summary writing, you would have met this word. So all irrelevant, not needed, right? And uninteresting details which interfere with effective communication must be excluded. So just say what you need to say and move on. Don't give us anything that is unnecessary, all right? And then courtesy. In all letters, you must be what? Yes, you must be polite. Practice it. And courteous in your tone. The tone is the how how you say what you want to say. And we can pick up your tone when you speak and when you write. Avoid abusive language, irony, and sarcasm. All right? Very important. I know when some persons are upset, they get abusive, but avoid abusive language. So bear those in mind. Now let us look at the sender's address. We can use a blocked form, which means that everything is neatly aligned. So the address 215 Mockingbird Way is neatly aligned with Cumberland Meadows. It comes below that immediately, so the two is aligned with the C, the P, the S, and the two in the date, right? And then Portmore, St. Catherine, you always put the parish last, followed by the date that the letter was prepared. 
We can use the open or unpunctuated form. Remember, we say that punctuation marks are very, very important. So in this case, we have the open form. So if you look at the end of each line, you realize that there is no punctuation mark. So this is called the open or unpunctuated form. So the letter is going to Mr. John Gordon. Who is he? He is the manager of Cool Supplies Jamaica Limited, where 35 Dr. Bird Close, Kingston 10. No punctuation mark. That's perfectly acceptable. Or we can use the fully punctuated form. So after Mr. Gordon's name, then we have his position or title. So he's the manager. You have the comma there. So you have the comma after each of the lines except the first one. And then the last line where you have Kingston 10, you have your full sub. So the address has come to its end. All right? So this is a fully punctuated form. So you have two options, either this one or the open punctuated. Then the complimentary close, very, very important. This is how I know that your letter has ended, okay? So you use yours faithfully or yours sincerely, cordially, or truly. There is no E in truly. Remember that. And the yours must be written with a capital letter. Whichever word comes after yours must begin with a common letter, and then you have your comma. Immediately after that, you will have your signature and your name printed clearly. Now, let us... Come up with some ideas now for the various prompts that the examiner has given us. So we're going to think about the effects of climate change on your community. Think about your community. Now that you have some information about climate change, how do you think it will affect your community? Okay? So we may have long periods of drought, heavy rains, flooding and landslides, very hot climate. Your concerns for your community, people will have to use more electricity in the hot climates, and this will result in increased use of energy, which will impact climate change negatively. Next point, people will be more uncomfortable in the hot climates. And remember, when you're planning, you can just make, you can just write phrases, you do not have to write in complete sentences. Your concerns for your community. Residents will have to pay more for electricity bill, especially in the summer months when it's very hot. We're going to have frequent rainfalls which result in flooding, landslides, impassable roads, people getting killed, and widespread potholes. And we will also have people being greatly inconvenienced, especially um, with the road situation. What are some things that can be done? People can plant more trees, they can burn less fossil fuels, they can take better care of the environment, walk and cycle more and drive less. Eat more natural foods and cook less, yes, cook less. Use less machinery in the homes and business places. What do you want the government to do? Think about that. Maybe you want the government to improve the transportation system so that fewer persons drive daily, or you want the government to launch campaigns that promote energy reduction, or you want to provide more education about climate, you want the government to provide more education about climate change and what people can do to prevent or reduce it. You may not use up all the information, but make sure you have it, okay? And then we get into our sample letter. So we start with the sender's address and the date. Then we get to the inside address, and I've given the Minister of Climate Change a name, right? So the City and Guilds didn't give me one, but I gave one, okay? So, um, Mr. Paul Newman, Minister for Climate Change and the Environment, so I'm using the address that I got from the examiner, okay? So, all I've added is a name. So, I've started my letter now. Dear Mr. Newman, notice where my dear is. I'm at my margin, so I'm not going to indent to start my salutation. I'm going to start right at the margin, okay? I've seen this a lot, and that is why I'm pointing it out. Dear Mr. Newman, and I've, given, I've used a title. The issues of climate change and its effect on my community, and remember I said this one is optional. I write to express my deep concern about the serious issue of climate change and the effects it has on my community. I have been doing a lot of research on climate change and what I have discovered is rather frightening. I am fully aware that we have already started to experience the negative effects of climate change and that these effects are likely to increase and put us all in grave danger. Our summers here in Jamaica have gotten much warmer in the last five years, and this takes a toll on most citizens, especially the poor among us who cannot afford certain luxuries like electricity, fans, and air conditioning units. You will agree with me that the effects of climate change are already being felt globally. In my community, we have had long periods of drought which have greatly affected farmers who need water for their crops to grow. When farming is affected in this way, we have to pay more for imported foods, which are oftentimes not as tasty and natural as our homegrown foods that has less fertilizer. The very hot climates have also been a serious issue and have created great discomfort for people, especially those with poor health. 
On the other hand, we sometimes experience, in, experience inclement weather that causes serious flooding, landslides, and road blockages. Just recently, we lost three members of our community as a result of flooding after a week of heavy rainfall and distress. I am very concerned about the well-being of the residents of my community because people have to use more electricity in the hot climate and this has resulted in increased use of energy which will impact climate change negatively as well as result in very high electricity bills that many people cannot afford. People are more uncomfortable in the hot climates, especially in the summer months and unfortunately it is during these times many of our youth drown while trying to escape the summer heat by going to the river and sea nearby. Quite a few residents in my community have moved away because they have lost valuable possessions during periods of flooding. The landslides are very frightening and have caused impassable roads for many days and sometimes even weeks. Furthermore, after the heavy rains, we have to contend with the widespread potholes on most of our roads and these cause people to be greatly inconvenienced. I believe that there are many things that we can do to reduce climate change. We must make a determined effort to plant more trees, burn less fossil fuel, take better care of the environment, walk and ride more and drive less, eat more natural foods and cook less, and use less machinery in homes and business places. The government that you represent also has major roles to play to address the climate change issue. I firmly believe the government needs to provide more public education about climate change and what people can do to prevent or reduce it. Improve our public transportation system so fewer people drive daily and launch campaigns that promote energy reduction. If these things are done, then I believe the effects of climate change will be reduced in Jamaica and we can set a positive example for others to emulate. Yours truly, Suzette Williams. And notice the common T for the truly, the comma after truly and Suzette's name. So Suzette is the writer. Now we can look at the rubric for the stage two writing activity. How will you earn your marks? What, what, what are the examiners looking for? Okay, so if you have a plan that is appropriate and includes all the key points, you can earn up to two marks, okay? The content, the what you write, the information that you put in the letter, if the candidate writes a letter and includes all the bulleted points which I just demonstrated for you, you earn up to four marks. If your writing is legible throughout, that means I can read everything that you have written, every single sentence, every word, you gain a mark for that. If the candidate writes at least, minimum now, you know, 200 words, you earn one mark for that. Then we look at format and structure. Format and structure are appropriate for a letter. If the structure and the format are appropriate, you earn your two marks. Then we look at the language, we look at the tone, how you say what you say, your expression, your use of standard English, right? And vocabulary, if all of these are appropriate for a letter, you get your three marks, all right? Then we look at the logical sequence of information and the planning will help you to put your information in a logical order, okay? So work with the prompts that you will be given Right? Stick to the plan and you will do extremely well. So writing is presented in a logical sequence most of the time. You will earn two marks. Sentence structure correctly uses a range of simple and compound sentences. Um, throughout, you earn up to three marks. Very, very important. And spelling is an English exam, so you know spelling is key. Spelling is correct to stage two of common words and relevant keywords, including those from work, study, and everyday life, three marks. Punctuation includes your initial capital letters, your upper and lowercase letters, and end punctuation marks. And remember, do not write in full caps. You're going to be penalized for that. All right, now, candidates indicate that they have proofread their writing for accuracy and meaning. And they can, this can be given, this can be any given names, initial or across. So make sure that after you have done your writing task, you look to ensure that there is nothing um, below the pages given. You may see something, however, to indicate that you have proofread your work. You may be asked to tick a box or you may be asked to sign your signature. Make sure you follow the instruction. And the grammar, of course. So we're going to focus on the subject verb agreement and the correct use of tense. And you will get as you will get three marks for that. And we're going to look to see if your writing is organized in paragraphs. So those are very, very important, okay?